The 24 Minute Angler is being brought to you by Berkeley, makers of super strong Berkeley Trilene fishing line. Santan flavored enhanced Berkeley power baits. Fish crave them. Baker's Base. We make them in Napanee, Ontario. Fish eat them everywhere. Hi, welcome to the 24 Minute Anger. I'm Vince McDonnell. Uh, that's Maury Rosenstrauss. And there's Stefan. I say Stefan because we're going to come back to Marco. Now it's mid April right now. Normally, at least based on the last few years, the ice has come off this lake, 31 mile lake in Quebec, in uh, almost mid May, around May 10th, May 12th. This year it came out around April 12th. It caught us all off guard. So we came up here. Now it's Monday, trout season does not open till Friday this week, so we're not gonna be trolling at all, we're just gonna jig for whitefish, but inadvertently we are gonna catch trout, we can't really control what these guys are gonna do out here, and since we're using cast masters, they, they can't resist. So throughout today's show, we're gonna show you some of our fish, hopefully. We're also gonna show you a few clips from past years that we haven't aired before. Um, we'll start with a real quick one right now, a friend of mine, his name is David Lever, uh, David passed away a couple of years ago of an illness, unfortunately. And we brought David up here fishing. You can see David out there right now. David is not a fisherman. We just got him his fishing rod. He has absolutely no clue what he is doing out here. And he's managed to land a spectacular lake trail right beside the cottage where we're staying. There are a lot of boat launches on this lake, but they're all at the north end. And we're fishing at the south end, which is much more private. Anyway, we're going to get ourselves organized. We're going to show you another clip of somebody else up here catching lake trout or whitefish, depending on what clip you throw in. So stick around for the show. Hopefully, we'll have some nice whitefish for you today. Now, we got up here, as I mentioned last night. We went out to test the waters a little bit. We could not buy a whitefish. We can see them on the sonar, but they're down about 45 feet. But Steph caught a couple small lake trout. We dealt with them pretty quickly. There he is right there. We've got a couple pictures of these trout. Not big trout, but nice starter fish. There is destination number one. Not too far away from the cottage. And believe me, that's an understatement. <laughs> we have right through the middle of the channel here, about 22 feet of water. It's all sand. When you go this way, it drops off to almost 100 feet. And when we go over there, same story. Drops off to about 90 feet. These fish in the spring, especially the white fish, they come up on top to eat little bibits and little mini freshwater shrimp off the bottom. Sometimes when you clean these fish, they're full of sand. Anyway, we'll be ready in a couple seconds. Well, that did not take too long, but we don't know yet if it's a white fish or lake trout. Don't get too close to the edge there, Steph. This water is only about 40 degrees right now. You would not sit down. This fish is going to be a while. It would not last too long. Maury says he's got a heavy fish here. We'll show you a couple of common mistakes people make. You'll see as Maury sometimes reels up, like right now, he lets too much slack get into the end of the rod tip, and that's when you could lose your fish. Wait, I can't see it. Keep reeling it in there. You're too much slack in your rod, uh, grasshopper. <laughs> there it is. It's a white fish. Oh, that's what we want. Nice all. He's hooked in the side. See, so that's a foul hooked white fish. You can't really help it. Last night we fished for hours, couldn't. Couldn't, didn't get one foul hook. Anyway, so it's got to go back no matter what. Generally, you can just grab the hook, give a little twitch with these fish, and they'll come right out. That's why they feel heavy. Yeah, because it comes in sideways. We've only been out here, what, maybe five minutes? Yep. If that much. Yep. Okay, now we're going to let this guy go. You ready? Yep. All gone. Oh, 
Well, I haven't even got a chance to get my line in the water yet, Maury. What oh, the heck? God. Oh, what a useless fisherman that is. There you go. And that's how I fish do it. There we go, Mort. It didn't take long. Nope. I Not really, I can usually tell if these are whitefish, trout, herring. I can't really tell. Nice there it one. is. Nice little whitefish. Is he hooked in the mouth? Yep, yep he is. Okay, now come to me. You see, he's already off the hook. That's how soft their mouths are. So we try and get the hook out of here. Look at Maury. Screwed up my hook in the net. How'd you do that, Maury? Okay, then we'll have a look at the fish. We'll try not to touch them because we want to let them go. But there's what they look like. Easy to catch in the spring, very difficult in the summer. So let them go out there more. Okay. This time, Maury, don't forget to hold on to the net and keep the net after you let the fish go. <laughs> oh, he's, he doesn't want to go anywhere. He wants to stay in the net. You can't even let him go properly. Look at that. <laughs> doesn't want to leave. There he goes, down to the depths. Look at that. Beautiful picture. I should have been a photographer, Steph. Yeah. It's a white it's fish. A beautiful white fish. Now let's see where it's hooked. Let's take it. Right not all lean too much. We don't want to. Yeah, right in, in the, the mouth. mouth. Nice size. I'm gonna go slow so it doesn't come out. Yeah, it's a good size. Eh? Probably almost four pounds. Yeah, real nice one. Are you ready with the net, Maury? Once yeah. we take the lure out, it should be at least a good pound anyway. Still. We don't want to move too quickly in the boat and send anybody overboard. you got to give yourself a lot more slack. Yeah. Well, now that's Steph's first white fish ever, right, Steph? Yep. Here, take this. Maury? See, when we were fishing last night, there were white fish everywhere, but we could not buy one, and none even got foul hooked. So when they don't want to get near your lure, they don't get foul hooked. Some days they take a run at it, just miss it, and we get them in the tail or something, but the last couple have been in the mouth. No teeth inside these guys, but they're very difficult to grab. They are. Is your hook already out of the fish? Yep. Well, this may take a while, so <laughs> we'll be back to you because we want to get a photo of this fish for Steph, too. This is the first story of the Maury Chronicles. Maury just broke his beautiful line that had an awesome acne cast master that I could have used to catch a fish because when he was casting out, he decided to wrap his finger around his line. Maury, how do you feel? Oh, I started, I stopped my cast because I didn't want to cast over Vince's line because he cast just a second before me. It's your own fault. You do that all the time. Uh, <laughs> right. Now, let's see. There's the air bubbles. Let's see. What do we have down there? It's right there. Looks like a nice white fish. We'll see if it's caught in the mouth or if it's caught with the Mori technique and the adipose fin or the tail or the pelvic fin. <laughs> Scrapping pretty good. Yep. He's right there. There he is. Oh, there he is over there. Look, yeah, right in the mouth. Look at that. Now, just come towards me a bit with the net. Okay. Stay put. We we move very slow doing all this stuff. See, the hook is already up. The lure is already out of the fish. So we'll try and get this out of here. Now we'll have a quick look at this fish. Just a second here. Here she is down here. Nice looking white fish, eh? Probably a good three and a half, maybe four pounds. Let her go. All gone, as my grandson says. Oh, right in the sun. That's that's just point. art, man. That's just art. You can't buy photography like this, folks. No, it's right behind you. Ooh. It looks like another nice big one. Right in the sun, too. Let's just head up here and see what's going on. It's a trout. It's a trout? Yep. I don't think it's a trout. Uh, I think it's a whitefish maybe hooked in no, the, one trout. of the fins. It's a beautiful lake trout. Look at the size of this guy. Can't see it yet. Nope. See all the air bubbles. Look at all the bubbles. Yeah. I'll bet you lunch it's a trout. What do you think, Vince? I don't know. It's not fighting like a trout, but... I can see it. Trout tend to do a lot of air bubbles like that. 
This is a nice size. I can see the fish just barely. Oh, look how beautiful that That's trout nice is. One. That's a trout. Oh, yeah. And normally that fish should be close to a keeper. It's got to be 55 centimeters. That'll be that would be very close. Tighten your drag a bit. No, it's perfect. There. How do you respond to that one, Maury? <laughs> when you catch a lake trout, this uh, you can talk, Maury. Okay, he's ready now, Maury. Unless you're waiting for him to float up. There we go. <sighs> We're going to get the hook out first. There. We're going to put the fishing rod away. Bring him over here more so we can have a quick look. Yeah, he would not be, well, he'd be very close to a keeper fish. Boy, four more days, buddy, and then you got to go hide on people. What do we have here, Maury? I think it's a white fish. Where do you think he's hooked? <laughs> By the way it's pulling, it could be anywhere. Just had a beaver swim by us. Well, I got a beautiful trout here. Can what you did you do, grab it right beside the boat? Yep, as it was falling the Castmaster here. It's a good thing I switched to the St. Croix Premier rod. Oh, there's a nice plug. Are they gonna give you a free one now? I don't know, hopefully. <laughs> uh, Maury, if, whenever you're ready, I'll just keep steering this trout over the lake <laughs> until we can net it. Here we go. Reminder, trout season not open, so we're being extra careful to let these fish go without injury. Yeah, I need a couple things here. All right, lift her up. Watch out for that hook. Yep, I got it right here. We're trying not to touch the fish if we can help it and leave that protective slime on the fish. Yep. All right, okay. we can let it go. In the lake, back in the lake. Looks like Maury was trying to hide that fish in his tackle box. Maury, when we let these fish go, they have to swim out of the net, hey, not back in for the second time. That's a quarter ounce. Is it gold? It's silver. Silver? Hard to tell with the sun, but there it is. Uh, sorry, that's a three-eighths ounce. Quarter we use if it's dead, dead calm, shallower water. for about 45 years now and I pride myself in taking pretty good care of them. Where I faltered was my trailer. I really didn't know what to do so I did nothing and last year that cost me a thousand bucks. Let me show you how I for about 45 years now and I pride myself in taking pretty good care of them. Where I faltered was my trailer. I really didn't know what to do so I did nothing and last year that cost me a thousand bucks. Let me show you how I get around that. Every time I go fishing, I spray a little bit of lithium grease up inside my trailer coupler and on the trailer ball. Next, I go to my tires, which have bearing buddies. I give them each a quick shot of lithium grease, make sure there's no water inside. Third, if you look underneath the trailer, you'll see the supports that connect the suspension or the leaf springs to the trailer. Those brackets tend to wear out over time, especially if you do a lot of bumpy roads. They're only about 20 bucks to replace, but you gotta do it. Last but not least, the thing that did cost me the money were these $5 U-bolt brackets that join the suspension and the axle. Mine broke, wrecked both tires, both fenders, and gouged my boat. So make sure to go to a garage and have them checked out.
Happy trailering. Well, here's the new taco box. Now, this is a Plano 3700. Can't really see the model very well. This is my trout box. These boxes are pretty overpriced. They're sitting anywhere from about $40 and up. But of course, I have to go buy four or five of them anyways. I can't help myself. They're a little difficult to carry, but let's just see. Now you can see the tackle we use on the top left. Oh, wrong way. This is high tech. On the top left and top right, we have our reef runners, some shallow ones and some deep ones. I think these are series 900s. In the middle of the box, let's have a closer look at these are EGBs. I used to get mine from a chap named Jack Sutton. And lower down, we have the special uh, West Rivers. I think it's a beautiful white fish. Yep. Yes, it is. It is a white fish, but I don't think it's hooked in the mouth. No. No. Hey, Mark. Yep. Thank you. It's quite common with whitefish. They, they miss these lures and just foul hook themselves. It's not that we're trying to catch them like that. Well, most of us anyway. It's... And we do let all these ones go. A lot of times then you can grab the lure if you know what you're doing. You just give it a twitch and it comes out of the fish. Almost. He's on yeah. the wrong side. Yeah, I know. He's off. I thought you'd grab the. Hold on, I'll just let him out. Okay, lower him down. Let him go. There he goes. More action from the front of the boat. I can't tell the size yet, but it seems pretty good. Coming over here. There's a white fish, it might be foul hook the way he's swimming out to the side. Still don't see the fish. We're looking for it down there. Right there. There it is, white fish. I haven't seen the hook is in the side gill plate. You're hooked on the cleat, Maury. There it is. Steer it this way a bit. Good.
looks like a white fish to me. That looks like a little trout. Well, we'll see. Not white fish. White right fish. in the mouse. It counts as long as it's flush. Okay, now just come towards me with the net there, more a bit. See, now all three trebles are in the mouth. See, that's how easy they come off. You can let them go more. Okay. Well, we're almost out of time. We didn't show you the picture of our other friends, relatives catching fish to fill time. We have lots of fish. We just wanted to show you some of those other trout because they were caught in season. I also want to thank Daiwa for allowing me to spend $850 to purchase these reels. All 12 of them. You know what? People buy $30 reels. My theory is, if you're going to buy one reel, go for it. Blow a load. Don't mention it to your wife. And just put it in a closet. Now, there's a lot of reasons that make these reels very expensive. I know absolutely none of them. I like it because it's really shiny. That's the big reason. These are Daiwa Exist spinning reels. We do not get them from the company whatsoever. I'm telling you this because I love them. Thank you for watching today. Thank you to the Bullock family for our fantastic accommodations like we get every year. Great. Hope you enjoyed your 24 minutes. We'll see you next time for another 24. Have a nice day.